Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. We're so grateful that you're here. We're going to start right now by singing our opening chant, Blessing to the World. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all who are here in the sanctuary. It's so nice to have you with us. And thank you to all of you who are joining us remotely via Zoom and Facebook Live. Just great, great to be together, however we come together. So why don't we come together in prayer? As we turn our attention inward, just feeling that part of us that every moment seeks to feel happy, free of any troubles, giving and receiving love, experiencing well-being in every way possible. And let's recognize that as the impulse of the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible that I call God, the one out of which all creation comes into being, the one that lives through, around, and as all that is. I absolutely know that that essence of God's nature is present in each of us, and it is unfolding throughout our time together. We feel it as the love vibration as we come together as a community, whether in person or remotely. I know that we feel that vibration of love unfolding through all those who are of service. I know that we are touched and uplifted by the divine operating through our musicians, Sam and Karen, and our soloist, Jamie, this morning. And I know that the divine speaks the perfect word through Dr. Mark, that we hear exactly what we need to hear today to awaken to that divine nature at the center of our being, to have a greater experience, a greater realization of it in our lives. And so I know that all of our time together really supports great healing and revealing of good for each and every one of us. And so I give thanks for this. I give thanks for all the blessings I know we receive. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing absolutely that this service is blessed. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. You are the face of God. I hold you in. You are the face 
And now please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's join in singing our congregational hymn, Joy and Peace in My Heart. <laughs> Please be seated. <laughs> okay, so this is a time when we give ourselves the gift of just getting still and communing with that divine presence within us. And so I'm going to invite you right now to just get still in your chairs, to close your eyes, just to turn your attention inward. And so for the next five minutes, we're going to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I will bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
want to know what it's like to hear the whole world sing. What it's like to feel one with everything. What it's like to forgive myself and then. What it's like to never judge again. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, it seems to me that when I think about our spiritual journey, um, I think the journey is from being somewhat asleep, maybe very asleep, to somewhat awake, to more awake, to very, very awake. Um, I've been thinking a lot uh, this week about Jesus. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the idea of Jesus Christ in terms of how we teach it here in religious science, which is different than perhaps other places, perhaps, yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, what people think about Jesus, I think, is not uh, the Jesus that we actually touch today. Uh, today, uh, actually, i got to look at my eyes here. Uh, today, not as a historical person, uh, but really as a living presence, a mystical 
living presence. In our textbook, Ernest Holmes says this in the chapter on finding the Christ, and this is one of those chapters I have to read every year at least once. He says that Christ is our true identity. All right, I'm going to admit something to you. I'm a little embarrassed to say when I grew up, I thought that Christ was Jesus' last name. I really did. I didn't know any better. I thought that Jesus was the son of Mary and Joseph Christ. I did. <laughs> you know, and, and so it was... Um, big for me to say, oh, Christ means something else. That was not his last name. In the world, we see outer forms of Christianity, but what I would say, I think it, I, it doesn't necessarily include the essence of Jesus Christ. And I think the only way to know the truth about Jesus Christ is through your own dedicated daily spiritual practice. Um, and so for me today, the consciousness of Christ is an awareness of our oneness. Whenever we know that we are one with God, one with other people, that there is a connection that cannot be severed, and we express that love through an energy of unconditional love, that, that to me is, is the Christ. Uh, the consciousness of Christ. So to live in Christ consciousness, I think, is to live in the freedom of unconditional love and also perfect wisdom. You know, in, um, going back uh, thousands of years, in the Middle East, they were roving tribes. And Jesus um, himself did not, uh, well, all right, scratch that. I'm going to back up. I just realized if I went down that road, it's going to be a lot of trouble. So I, I'm going I'm to back up. In the Middle East, a couple thousand years ago, there were largely roving tribes. And the Jewish people did not intermarry with other groups. The bloodline was as pure as it could be. And so from the Jewish devotion to the law, a Messiah would come forward. This is what had been prophesied, right? So obedience to the law, why they were the chosen people, had to do with their obedience to the law, but also that they were a monotheistic people. They chose one God. So why the Jewish people are called the chosen people is because they chose the one. Remember, up until that time, people had many, many gods. There was a God for this, and a God for that, and a God for parking, and a God for you know, whatever. You know, I mean, they just had everything. So obedience to the law is why the Jewish people are referred to as the chosen people, because they were monotheistic. They had only one God, Jehovah, no opposites. Now, Jesus taught a universal truth that later became shaped into uh, Christian religions. And I often wonder what he would think today, don't you? I wonder um, sometimes if he wouldn't think maybe we have missed it a little bit, or a lot in some cases. But the Bible tells us of uh, a baby who was born of a virgin that was God-ordained, he was miracle-working, uh, a divine man beyond any possible frame of reference. Now, this is... Um, very different than what we teach in the science of mind. Because what came forth through the minds, the revelations that came forth through the minds of the founders of new thought was not that Jesus was the great exception. Because up until this point, really up until Mary Baker Eddy and Ernest Holmes and Emma Curtis Hopkins and these individuals who brought forth this new consciousness onto the planet, everybody thought that Jesus was the great exception to the rule. But if Jesus is the exception to the rule, how does that help us? That doesn't really support us. So Jesus discovered the divine depth within himself, and we are to do the same. You know, I believe that Jesus was a man on a quest. He really was. He came here with a purpose, just like we come here with a purpose. He was a real person, and he knew his unity with God, and he lived from that. Now, I suspect that all of us have moments, parts of our days, where we are really in a place where we know we're connected with God, and we live differently when we know we are connected with the something greater. When we know that we are connected with the love intelligence of the universe, how we show up in life is more as a reflection of the love intelligence of the universe. We are loving, we are intelligent, we are showing up as our best self. So that's what we are after. Like Jesus knew his unity with God and lived from that, we want to be in remembrance of our unity with God, our oneness with spirit, and live from that place. See, because before this, up until this time, I believe people were exclusively living in the experience of separation, that God was outside, that God was apart, that God was up there, that God was judging. You know, the kingdom of God 
we teach is the potential that is within us. And I believe that Jesus, like us, was a student on the path, that he had a quest, and on this quest, he would achieve the fullness of the Christ. So Jesus said, I have overcome. To me, that means that Jesus knew he was going through stuff to get to the healing on the other side. Now, Jesus was a Jew. He was synagogue educated. He'd heard the prophecy of the coming Messiah. And later, he would wear that mantle. I believe it was a conscious choice. It was not predetermined. I believe that he made a decision, I think I might be that Messiah. I think I might be the person to show people a different, better way. So a man like us who had caught the vision of all the possibilities within himself. Now, I believe for each and every one of us, there are infinite possibilities within us. But for, for many of us, they go undisclosed, unrevealed. They're not brought forth into expression. Jesus also said this, which has always been interesting to me, resist not evil. Don't fight it. And so what do we do? We overcome evil with good, overcome evil with God. You know, and, and you know, I suppose one of the things that really has attracted me to Jesus is that Jesus had a lapse. Yeah, in the temple with the money changers. This is a favorite of mine because it shows me again and again that he is human like me. Jesus got really upset. What was happening in the temple was wrong. The money changers should not have been in there selling sacrifice animals and changing, changing money and doing all these things in the temple. You know, and so Jesus got mad. He kind of had a little episode, you could say. He turned over the tables. Now that clearly would not have gone over big. But Jesus also said, in spite of the lapses, he said that all that I do, you can do too, if you have faith. So people, it seems to me, have so often thought that Jesus Christ is his name, you know? But Jesus really was this consciousness of, of teacher, of healer, this consciousness of one who knows they are so one with God that before he asks, the prayer is even answered. And wow, I think that's an extraordinary thing for us to aspire to, to so know and trust the presence, the power of God within us that we know before we ask, our prayer is already answered. I think that Jesus demonstrated the divine process in, in his expression of life. And so Christ in you is your own unique pattern. This is what Ernest Holmes teaches us. And it is a pattern of perfection and your own power to fulfill it. So the possibility of overcoming, I think, exists within all of us. So think about your life right now today and think of the areas where you have to overcome. Oh, this is a difficult relationship at work. Oh, I've got to do, you know, I mean, whatever that may be for you, wherever you have to rise up and be a little bigger and know a greater truth so that there can be a demonstration of God's infinite good. Take that in right now. The possibility of overcoming whatever faces you, the overcoming already exists within you. Every person, Ernest Holmes teaches us, is a potential Christ. So what I love about our teaching is that no matter what we face in life, there's always more in us to be brought forward into expression. You know, the mystery of God in you can come forward. The Christ in you can come forward. Our divine potential to overcome any obstacle is what we want to bring forward. Now, I think Jesus knew the universal principle just like we all know all, like we will know it through a personal spiritual practice and revelation, right? So he goes off again and again to pray. And you know what's interesting? He doesn't always take everybody with him. When he does, that's one of the things that really struck me. Now, so often he goes away alone, but then sometimes he takes James, uh, John, and Peter with him. So I think those are maybe three of the closest in disciples with him. But you know, even in the garden, when he says, wait with me, while I pray, it's difficult for them to rise up to that level of consciousness, isn't it? Because they fall asleep. And that's what I started with, you know, that sometimes I'm more asleep than I am awake. Jesus, I think, was true to what is within all of us, you know? I often see uh, signs that say, Jesus saves. You've probably seen those. They've been around forever. I don't think that that's accurate. Okay, so I know I'm probably on thin ice with some people, but mm -hmm. that's okay. It's my gift. <laughs> um, I think that Jesus doesn't save. I think he points the way by which a person can be transformed 
by the renewing of their mind. Mm -hmm. So Jesus points to the truth. Now, we don't get stuck on the pointer. The pointer is not the thing. The pointer points to the truth, right? That's the mistake people often make. They think the pointer is the thing rather than the truth that the pointer is pointing to. Does that make sense at all? I'll just keep moving on. <laughs> Ernest teaches us about the goodness of God is ever available to each and every one of us. I think this is such a valuable thing to remember every single day, that the goodness of God is given to me fully and freely every day. It's ever available to each and every one of us. And I look at Jesus actually like, he's ahead of us on the path. He's our evolutionary elder brother. You know, he's saying to us, hey, look, this is the path I've walked. You could walk this way too. You know, so he's revealing a way, a way, and that way may be a way that calls to you. But there is a divine depth, I believe, within each of us, and I believe that depth within us is absolutely limitless. St. Paul said this, he said, I used to see as through a glass darkly, but now I see face to face. You know, when the consciousness of our oneness comes, then we see face to face. We see really clearly all the error, all the distraction, all that seems not right fades away. We are not talking about, about Jesus so much as about what Jesus discovered, about what he revealed to us that we can experience as well. And what I believe that is, is I believe that that's about oneness. I believe that it's about the divinity that we are, our sonship and daughtership of God, our divine potential. I think we want to make our lives a releasing of that divine potential. I know I do. I mean, I believe there's all this incredible divine potential within each and every one of us. Don't we want that to come forward into expression as loving relationships and creative activities and abundant life? All of that. Right? So I think we want to make our lives this avenue where the potential of the divine that's within us just comes forward. You know, and, and, and all along the way, you know, praise God that there is a spiritual truth that if we embrace it, actually makes us more and more free. Isn't that fantastic? God, I just love that, you know, that if I will just embrace the truth, I will get more free. And I'll tell you, and it's always interesting to me how sometimes I don't want to embrace the greater truth. I want to sit in my little pot of pity for a little bit longer. Well, I'll embrace the truth in about another 15 minutes. I think I'm just going to sit here and wallow a little bit longer, you know. But I also know that as soon as I do, everything starts to shift. You know, everything, everything. The principle of Jesus Christ is being revealed through us now, to live as Jesus Christ is to bring the power of love into all that we do. If this speaks to you, and if it does, I invite you to open to a greater invitation, you know, to the presence of Christ. Christ only goes where Christ is invited. This is a metaphysical principle. And so we have to invite that presence, that activity, that spirit into our life again and again and again. So Christ comes by invitation. So my spiritual practice is the invitation. When I sit down and I close my eyes and I say, I want to know what Jesus knew. I want to love the way he loved. I want to be able to do the things that he says we can do and greater. And so in that, in that, I know that Christ is only going where Christ is inviting. I'm inviting, and the way I invite is through my spiritual practice. I make a place in me for that principle, power, and presence, because that's what Christ is. Christ is not a man. Christ is a principle, a power, and a presence that's within us. And so to be like Jesus, I think a place to start is to say what he said. And you know what I'm going to say. Say the Lord's Prayer. When the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray, what did he give them? He gave them the Lord's Prayer. So it seems to me, if I want to be like that consciousness, that evolved, uplifted, light-filled consciousness, I got to do some of those works, right? And part of that is I have to pray the Lord's Prayer. I think I have to forgive. Look, if we tell the truth, Jesus knew something about forgiveness, wouldn't you say? I mean, think about it. Here was a guy who really didn't do anything except upset people politically, you know, the order of the day with the Romans. But he, he fed people, he healed people, he raised the dead. He sounds like a great person to have around, don't you think? Yeah, like, why? this would be extraordinary to have Jesus around. But to be like Jesus, I think we say the Lord's Prayer, we work on forgiving, we try to be grateful to God in every moment. And remember, always, 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 
like Ernest Holmes teaches us, yes, there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it, but also that that power for good can use us if we will let it. And that power for good is the Father, Mother, God principle within. And that's what Jesus knew and we know does the works. So he told us greater things than these will you do. And I believe with all my heart that he meant that. I don't think he was prone to saying things he didn't mean, just to fill in the gap or be nice. I think he meant it. Greater things than this will you do. So let's attend to that right now. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that right here where we are, the Spirit of God, the living Spirit Almighty, is right here. It is a spirit of love and wisdom and intelligence and peace. And it's right where we are. It's the truth about each and every one of us. And I claim for us today that we are demonstrating the Christ mind, that we are filled with the spirit of God's love and intelligence, and we express our lives in a loving way. I claim for each and every one of us that our interactions are loving, that we are the new order of being on earth, that we are filled and emanating the spirit of God. That's all that comes from us. And so I know also that because the law is in place, that is all that returns to us. We are emanations of that most high God. And so I know we bring forth that potential that is within us, whatever it may be, whether it's in relationships or work or health, peace of mind, creativity. We know that with God, all things are possible. We are not limited by our past because principle is not bound by precedent. In this moment, we are a new being. And where we have seen through a glass darkly, I claim now that we see face to face. So I know for each and every one of us, healing is happening. We open ourselves, heart, mind, body, and we welcome God's perfect activity within every cell, action, and function of our being. And as we know this for ourselves, we know it for our loved ones, our family members, parents, and children, all of those we hold near and dear. We know that the activity of the one life is flowing through them freely and unencumbered. We let our prayer be the blessing activity that embraces the world we live in. So all that emanates from us out into the world is an energy of love, an energy of peace, an energy of healing and upliftment. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God, and we include all people who aren't even on a path or don't know they're on a path. We just open ourselves up to be big enough to love with no exclusions. We love in a lavish way, the way God loves. And so with a grateful heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. It makes us more free, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right. We'll sing one time. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. So grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Love is my choice Love is my decision Jamie Lula. Thank you so much, Jamie. You can all get Jamie's music at jamielula.com. Thank you for making that so easy. <laughs> Thank you. Let's show some love and support for our awesome musicians, Sam and Carrie.
Okay, so for those of you here in the sanctuary, uh, you can, if you want to drop off your donations today, there are two boxes as you're exiting the sanctuary where you can uh, drop those off. Uh, for those who are watching us online, do you remember all the ways you can, we, we make it so easy, we really try. <laughs> you can call the church office for about 30 minutes after service, 818-762-7566 and make a donation over the phone via credit or debit card. Uh, you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can make a one-time or a recurring donation. And uh, you can also text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Prayer with a practitioner. So here in the sanctuary, we have a couple of practitioners, if you would like someone to pray with you, just uh, come forward at the end of service and we can either do prayer here in the sanctuary with our masks on or we have the option of just, we have a, uh, getting some chairs and just stepping outside the sanctuary if you feel more comfortable uh, doing it that way. You can also email, oh, pardon me, and uh, for those of you online, you can get prayer with the practitioner on Zoom so uh, if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website, connect to us on Zoom, and we can put you in a private breakout room with a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one prayer. You can also send your prayer requests to our email address, prayer at nhcrs.org, or call the church office, and option four allows you to leave a message with a prayer request. And we send all of those requests out every evening to our practitioners so you're well supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service. I get to nap during the day. <laughs> and then <laughs> I get to come, the, um, so it's gonna be on Zoom, Facebook Live, and here in the sanctuary. I get to come for our meditation at 6.50 p.m. Service starts at seven, and our very special guest speaker this week is practitioner Liz Racy. Stand up, Liz. <laughs> so we get to be together on pulpit. You get to do most of the work. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> and Liz's topic is listen and obey. Oops, I forgot the obey part. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Our Abundance Workshop 2021, which we also call a Science of Mind Tune-Up for a Happy Life, because it's not just around abundance with finances, although, of course, that's part of it, but it's just about living an abundant love, a life full of love, full of all the good that we seek to experience. And uh, that's on Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8.30 p.m. through July 27th. It's on Zoom. And the cost is responsible giving. And this is being taught by our very own Dr. Mark Vieira. And really, we invite you to join us for this life-changing experience. It's based on the book, The Abundance Book, by John Randolph Price. And so if you want to sign up, uh, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and you'll find the links to sign up for that and get the information on how to join on Zoom. Our grief support group is meeting today at 1 p.m. on Zoom. That's being led by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur. Our circle of healing with uh, practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart meets next Sunday uh, at 1130, and that'll be live here in the sanctuary. We continue with our in-person attendance, obviously, Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, we just remind everyone we're still wearing masks. Uh, in the sanctuary, we just really want everyone to feel comfortable to come back and uh, participate in person. So thank you for your cooperation with that. And of course, we continue to broadcast on Facebook Live and Zoom. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30, and they are now meeting in person in the junior church as well as on Zoom. So if you can't be here, you can still join via Zoom, but. Uh, all men are welcome, and again, that's over in our junior church. Our Zoom virtual patio continues. For those of you who can't be here in person yet, 
uh, just go on after or before service and you can visit with congregants. And our Zoom meditation continues every morning, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. I see quite of you who are on that uh, in the morning. It's nice to see you in person. So for all information, North Hollywood Church of Religious Science, we go to nhcrs.org. Yay, <laughs> you got it. I love it when they listen. Um, and you can also sign up for our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters on our website. So with that, thank you again for being here. Let's join in the peace song. <laughs> So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.